I want to talk about your grandfather, though, because sure. we've talked about him previously, and uh, he's kind of a big deal. I mean, you're, you're, I've heard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little so bit were... about how you learned of all of that. So my grandfather, his name is Edvin Stroutmanis. Mm -hmm. He is a Latvian immigrant who came here from Latvia with my grandmother. And he was, he started his career in Chicago and he taught at the Art Institute in Chicago. But then around, I think the time of the seventies, caught wind of what was going on in New York City with abstract expressionism and was like, oh, I'm missing the scene, time to go out there. Not that he wasn't making his own waves in Chicago where he was the art director of Playboy. Oh, wow. In its heyday when no people way. did read it for the articles. <laughs> um, definitely. Yeah. So he uplifted my grandma and my dad and my aunt and moved them to Soho in I want to say the earlier mid 70s. Okay. And that's where our family remains today. Um, but my grandfather's work is huge uh, action paintings, as they're called. And he, they're so large and they're oils and they're abstracts, they did not make paintbrushes large enough for him. So in our archive, in our family, we have old mops and like rakes that he would literally like slam down and move around on the canvas on the wow. floor or on the wall if that was his method for that one and that's they're just full of like huge smatterings of every color of paint some are more structural he had a skull period as every artist does. oh really yeah oh like wow. you know haystacks for some but like it's new york so it's skulls right um <laughs> But yeah, so he, um, we just had a retrospective of his art um, last summer in his yeah. native country in, um, not Riga, it was, I'll get you the name of the city, but it was a very small town in like rural Latvia where there was this huge retrospective and there's like a resurgence of interest in his art, even though he passed away in the early 90s, which is what led to us having the loft available to move into because <laughs> it was a lot of square footage for my grandmother to have on her own. Yeah. She was an accountant. She wasn't doing large scale oil paintings. So she was like, oh, you want to move your family of eight into here? Sure. There's space for that. Right. So and where were you before that? So before I moved into New York City when I was in third grade. Okay. So when I say I'm from here, this is all I know yeah. and all I remember. But prior to that, we moved four different times before I was in third grade. Wow. So I was born in Canada, dual citizenship. Sick. Um, line up, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And Zapino's so like, how do I get on that already? <laughs> um, and, well, you got married, so that's right. How, right? So now Isn't we have to go to Canada and Step get him a passport. One. Yeah. Um, but essentially, we were in Canada, and my dad was in sales at the time. So his job kept moving us around and like it was a growing family. Like my mom had six children. So at the time it was me and a few of my brothers and sisters. And we moved slowly kind of down south from Canada. We moved to Albany and then we moved to a town near there like called Ravina. And then from there we moved to, I think there was one other spot in between. And then we landed in New York and I started the third grade at a school in the village. Wow. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of how, and so that must have been in like early or mid nineties that yeah. that was, yeah. Did you have a lot of time to spend with your grandfather before he passed away? Or? I didn't have a ton of time. I was very young, but I was yeah. old enough in my siblings that I'm the one that kind of remembers him. He was exactly what you would imagine an Eastern European painter to be like, where it was like smoking like a chimney, drinking like a fish, cursing like a sailor, and having like really off color, unsafe pranks and jokes, like oh not gosh. suitable for kids or any people. Like uh, in these old buildings, there's huge staircases that just go to the top floor. It's just one big giant situation that you can fall down like exorcist style. What? So oh we gosh. were on the second floor, which is, the first one but still high yeah and I remember as a kid one of my memories is like running up the stairs because in Albany we'd come visit my grandparents on the weekend and we'd run up the stairs so excited only to have my grandfather and his glass eye pop out of the door and like scare us <laughs> to the point of us almost falling down these two steep steps of stairs like all the way oh so my gosh. he was a character yeah, he um, sounds fun. I'm sure he kept like his marriage very interesting yeah. and he would always host people at the house like fellow artists so on the wall of the bedroom that I grew up in is like an original Basquiat because wow. he used to hang out there doing I don't know what do you you know <laughs> what do you do in a in a place in Soho in the 70s while you graffiti on the wall I don't know something you know moral standing um <laughs> but yeah so there was always like parties and hosting guests and like they would go to all of these 
really old school New York places in the area and like in the um, neighborhood. And everyone who's really old, who still lives in Soho, all know each other because that was the click back then, was just right. like anyone who's been grandfathered in literally to these buildings are all aware of each other because Soho is a small place mm -hmm. and there's so much going on in there. And it's like the European destination because it's so photogenic and it just looks beautiful with the cobblestones. But when you break it down, it's like a bunch of old people holding on to their square footage. Right. <laughs> like essentially. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so did he parlay what he was making from the Playboy gig into purchasing that location? Is that? So we never purchased it. It's oh, still okay. rent controlled from really? the 70s. That's wow. how we're, yeah, that's how we're able to be there. We don't wow. own property. We're just very blessed with like the lease laws here. Amazing. Everyone we knew has been bought out, but um, yeah, it was never a money move. And Soho back in the day was not safe. Like right. it was not yeah. a destination to live in. And actually the second floor places were the penthouses because there was no elevator. So to live on the top floor is like losers. Because yeah. <laughs> it's walk up yeah, to whatever, walk up only. And then the ceilings get shallower as you get higher in these old buildings. Oh, really? I don't know the reason for that, but like second floor has the highest ceilings and then it gets smaller as you go higher. Huh, weird. Yeah. So it's a bold move by him to go from like a really stable, you know, successful as far as what it means to be a successful job to like no i'm gonna i'm going into paintings now yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. he was 100 percent. i would imagine just following his passions yeah. i'm sure my reserved grandmother the accountant was like oh i'm totally on board with this decision um but she had a great career here and he just wanted to be on the scene and to be seen wow. and to create what he wanted in the city that never slept yeah. And he did that. Wow, that's such a, I feel like that story is the New York story. Like that's what brings people here still now. Yeah. And it's still, it's not the same as it was in the 70s, but it still has like vibrancy and creative people. And even the fact that like your family can still be living there because it's rent controlled and you come from this creative place that's totally like why people are here yeah it's absolutely a mecca still yeah like, 